This is East Hollywood High School, where we don't only care about the movies we make, we care about the environment we make them in. So, we set up a drone to record the pollution in our air, and then we ask the professionals for some solutions. Our goal was to get some air quality data near the school so that it would be relevant to us and our, our, uh, our lives. We grabbed a drone and uh, figured out how to hook up a sensor that we could send into the air. We grabbed air quality data, CO2 levels, uh, total volatile organic compounds um, at five different elevations up to our maximum flight ceiling because we're close to the airport. And it's not just the teachers here that are trying their hardest to help. It's the students. The students are always included no matter what. So we had our students operate the drones and collect the data themselves. Um, so it was my first time flying an actual drone. So just like kind of getting the hang of it with the rem like the remote and stuff was a little hard. Um, and you can't like, since we work so close to an airport, you can't go very high or very far. So that was a little stressful, but other than that, it was pretty, pretty easy. I really, like once I got the hang of it, I really enjoyed flying the drone. It was a lot of fun and there's a camera connected to it so I could see like everything. Um, that was pretty cool. Project was kind of that we were going to fly the drone up into the sky to kind of test the different like air quality, humidity, all the different kind of factors and see how it kind of changes at different elevations. Um, and we were using these little uh, devices, these like sensors that have like a ton of different like really cool sensors. Like they can measure CO2, humidity, temperature. The thing that was like really surprising to me is we had something that was basically measuring pollution in the air. And it was like pretty high at like uh, like just off the ground. As you went a little bit higher, it kind of like died down. Then it started getting like exponentially higher. But everything else kind of was like a little bit to be expected. As you got higher, the uh, atmosphere and like air pressure got higher. So did uh, um, like humidity and such. That was kind of the most striking thing. Now that we know the numbers, we can go ahead and ask these professionals, what can we do to help? I think doing projects like this, I think your generation is probably a lot more um, open to, to recognizing, hey, I can be a part of this solution. And so um, recognizing that your individual effort actually can make a difference. Um, I think that your generation is really good at that. And I think that if you think about how your individual um, decisions are impacting the world as a whole, um, that could have a, a really powerful effect on um, the things that you know the problems that we have here in the world reduce how much we use right so it's like can i consolidate trips can i take public transportation can i take a bike or an e-bike if i have to have a car make it an ev yeah the everyday actions citizens can take to really help improve our air are getting out of your cars so our mobile um, sources our trucks and cars on the road are a huge part of our air quality issues and so if you can consider walking taking public transit maybe carpooling any of those small actions will really have a benefit um, and really help to improve our air quality riding your bike or taking the bus or being an activist and writing letters to elected officials when we have the flexibility of making uh, choices that will reduce our impact on, air, on uh, local air quality. So that could be working from home um, instead of driving to work or taking the bus, the train, instead of um, uh, taking our own car, uh, carpooling when we can, um, um, not turning our fireplace on on a bad air inversion day. 